Olga Botner, you are a member of the Nobel Committee for Physics and this year's prize is about neutrinos. What is the prize for exactly? So this year the prize honors a fundamental discovery in physics and uh, since neutrinos are very common in our surroundings and they are very common particles in the universe the discovery that neutrinos are actually not massless makes a difference. It makes a difference theoretically but it also makes the difference to how our sun functions. If it wouldn't be for neutrinos the sun would not be shining anymore. If it wouldn't be for neutrinos supernovas would not be exploding the way they explode. The elements that we are all made of would not exist. So neutrinos are very important, but this is fundamental physics. What are neutrinos then? <laughs> no, I wish we knew what neutrinos are. Neutrinos are among these few fundamental particles which make up matter. And we know them from radioactive decays, but what they really are, no one knows. No one has ever seen a neutrino. Neutrinos have no electric charge and we can only detect particles which carry electric charge. And so we can only discover neutrinos when they interact with something and produce charged particles. And this is how we know there are three kinds of neutrinos, but no one has ever seen the neutrino itself. And the prize is actually for a discovery of neutrinos oscillations, that neutrinos change identities also. Yes. Uh, what does it mean? Well, it means that neutrinos... It's very hard to say that a neutrino changes identity because it makes you think of the fact that, you know, you have a neutrino sitting on the table in front of you and all of a sudden it becomes something else. So neutrinos do not change identity like that. They change identity while they move through space. When they do that, you can produce one kind of neutrino but then if you try to detect it hundreds, hundreds of kilometers further away, you discover that what you catch is not the same kind of neutrino, but a different kind of neutrino. So something has happened on the way from the source to the detector. And this is what we call neutrino oscillations. And this has to do with quantum mechanics. And quantum mechanics, I can see that, you know, as soon as you say quantum mechanics, people get totally, you know, this is not for me, I don't want, you know, I'm not going to understand it. But in reality, it's not that difficult. Quantum mechanics describes particles moving through space like waves. So if you think of waves in a pond, like someone throwing two stones in a pond, both stones will create waves and these waves will interfere. And likewise in space, neutrinos moving in space are described by waves. These waves interfere, they overlap, and this is what we discover in the form of oscillations. So it's an, it's an interpretation of a quantum mechanical phenomenon. And the two laureates this year, uh, they made big experiments and they led big uh, collaborations. How come these two uh, scientists were awarded this prize. So, this, so it is true that these two scientists are part of big collaborations. We have the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory collaboration uh, headed by Art MacDonald since 1990. Art was one of the 16 people who proposed Sudbury Neutrino Observatory back in 1984. So he has really been in the journey from the very beginning. He has made a proposal, he has built the observatory, he has been the organizational and intellectual leader of this venture. On the other side we have this, the Super Kamiokande Observatory in a mine in Japan. Uh, Super Kamiokande works somewhat different. The Super Kamiokande is a second generation observatory following the Kamiokande. Uh, Takaki Kaita worked on Kamiokande while a PhD student and he worked with atmospheric neutrinos. When moving to Super Kamiokande, he led one of the three 
experimental groups trying to make sense of the data they were getting. So he was leading the uh, atmospheric neutrino group and trying to investigate the properties of the neutrinos. So he was the intellectual leader of this effort. And both made discoveries around the turn of this millennium. Both uh, discoveries were the turn of this millennium. And you mentioned that neutrinos still are a big puzzle. Uh, yes. So what's going on since then? So since, so since then, we've discovered that neutrinos are even more of a challenge than we thought they were. Because, okay, if neutrinos are massless, we do not understand it, but at least the mass identical to zero is one of the fundamental constants of the universe and just describes the universe we live in. Now we know that neutrino mass is not zero. So now the question becomes, why is it not zero and why is it so small? So if we, if we physicists discover something which is very small, but actually not equal to zero, we get very excited because there must be something which makes this quantity small but not zero. So there is a lot of experimental activity, one trying to determine exactly what the mass is. We don't know what the mass is. We only know an upper limit. We want to know why the mass is so small. And of course, theorists have lots of proposals. We want to know why neutrinos only appear in a left-handed variety and not in a right-handed variety. They may be a new type of particle, which is called the Majorana particle. So people are trying to figure out that. And so, you know, in the end, this discovery of neutrino oscillations has created a wide open field. So instead of just trying to determine what the neutrino mass is, we are now trying to determine the properties of the neutrino. And this may teach us a whole lot of new things about the universe. And uh, you yourself uh, are a spokesperson for the big experiment on the South Pole. Can you tell us about neutrinos? Can yes. you tell us something I always about love that? to tell about neutrinos at the South Pole. Yeah, I'm, I'm the spokesperson of the International Ice Cube Collaboration. So we are about 300 scientists working with a detector buried deep underground be below the surface of Antarctica at the South Pole. There is a detector in the glacier detecting not atmospheric and not solar neutrinos, but we hope to see neutrinos coming from the outer space. We do detect atmospheric neutrinos, but to us, this is not a signal, it's a calibration source. So since, we, so since there are theories describing how the atmosphere functions, we use the atmospheric neutrinos to calibrate our detector. However, a few years ago in 2013, we discovered the flux from the outer space. Neutrinos coming not from our galaxy, but somewhere from the outside of our galaxy. And this is the first. And for this discovery, IceCube was named the breakthrough of the year 2013. And now we are continuing on this path and try to learn more about these cosmic neutrinos, which sources produce them, and how they get these enormous energies, which are millions of times larger than what the sun is capable of doing, and what we can do with our man-made terrestrial accelerators. So once more, there is a lots of experiments about neutrinos still going on. Why is it so important to know just neutrinos, uh, what, what they are? <laughs> Well, this is an important question. Uh, and this year's prize is for fundamental physics, definitely. Now, the use of fundamental physics for society is something which I could discuss at length. But it, it's clear that humans have this urge to learn more about the universe that we live in. And fundamental science is one of the pillars of modern society. So I, I usually say that if we didn't have this urge, we would still be living in caves and we would still be afraid of the lightning. But having learned what we have, we have built a modern society with computers, with GPS, with cures for cancer. All these things are based of, on discoveries in fundamental science. Einstein didn't develop the special relativity to give us GPS. 
but we have DPS and it's based on, not on his special but on his general theory of relativity. We are still curious. We are Thank still you curious. very much, Olga Botner.